uh, with the news from yesterday. I, um, we're, we're really, really relieved and excited that Aziz has his eligibility first off for Aziz. It's been, it's been really hard on him. And I think that that's been the, the thing I've tried to remind myself because it's been hard on our team and our program, but it's been really hard on him first. So uh, we're really excited about that. Um, th there's a lot of people to thank. Uh, so first off, I want to thank President Pinto and John Cunningham for supporting him through this process. Um, and if I started going down the list of, of, of people, I'd miss people. So I'm going to be very cautious there. But, you know, Drew Adams and Chad Dollar and our staff work tirelessly to try to support these guys on a day-to-day -day basis. And, um, you know, there's been a team of people around Aziz that have, that have been great. Um, even public support from people like David Yost, our attorney general. Like, that. I, I really appreciate everybody. And finally, I want to thank the NCAA for, for just doing the right thing. Um, you know, I, 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 we, we, I appreciate it. I'm not one of these people that's not going to recognize that. I totally appreciate that. He belongs on the court. I'm glad we're finally getting there. It's a little bittersweet because, um, you know, you, you still have a, a young man in that locker room, Jameel Reynolds, that he really does deserve to be out there too and have that same moment that Aziz has and every day that it doesn't happen you know, it, it's hurting him. And so, uh, you know, it's, we're not, we're not like done yet, you know, trying to get the right, the guys on the floor. Uh, but, but that's a step in the right direction with disease. The neatest thing I'll say um, is watching Jamil's reaction to Aziz's clearance yesterday was just really special for me. It made me emotional. He was as happy as anybody for Aziz. And I think if you put that in perspective, you know, to think about it didn't help him. He's in the same position, but he was really happy for his teammate. That made me feel a certain way about the kind of guys we have in that locker room. So still feeling for him quite a bit, uh, and, and, but it's a step in the right direction. And I, and I do want to thank the NCAA for doing the right thing, and I hope we'll do the right thing for uh, Jamil as well. I don't know if you've been around the guys yet today or not as you get ready for practice, but maybe a little different bounce in everybody's step, knowing at practice today that the big guy's not a decoy, that he, that he gets to be part of the game plan? Yeah, I haven't. Uh, we've been huddled up as a staff, game planning and preparing for practice all morning. We'll see him here in an hour and a half or so. Um, you know, I, I'd like, I'm one of these, these guys, I'm not gonna try to, um, of course, there's going to be some excitement because they've enjoyed playing with him every day in practice. So to have the, have the ability to play with a, another teammate in the game, I think it, it wouldn't matter who it was. I think we'd be excited for anybody, and I think our team will have a little bit of that. I think we got to be cautious, though. You know, he hasn't played a competition with us yet. You know, he's a piece to our team. He's not <laughs> – you know, I, I, I love the excitement and enthusiasm for him. I, by the way, I want to thank our fans, like the people that have gotten behind and supported him. I, that's meant a lot to Aziz. It's meant a lot to our program, and continue to do that for Jamil as well, because it really does matter. But it, it, it's not like you know Aziz plays and we're going to win by 150 or something like that. Like I, I don't want to. I love the energy, but we got to make sure there'll be some adjustment. And it's it's his first time putting the uniform on. We haven't had a lot of time to prepare for it, so it's not going to. It won't be perfect tomorrow. And. Um, I, I think our guys now have games under their belt. They'll be ready to play basketball. But, yeah, I think we got to make sure we don't put too much into just one new player playing, even though we are so excited that this is finally over in, in his case. Is maybe depth immediately the biggest thing that it changes? Because two nights ago we were in here talking about Odie gets two fouls in the first half, and it it changes everything. And now there's an extra body in the front court. So maybe short term is the depth what's impacted maybe the most? Yeah, I, I think that's the thing that's most obvious. Is, I, I said this to Odie uh, yesterday morning. I, I said, hey, I, I'm sorry I didn't play you with two more. I played him a really short segment with two just to give Vic a breather in the first half against Northern Kentucky. I said, it's not that I don't trust you. Because when you get older players that have the experience that Odie has, you know, I'm, I'm going to play you with two fouls. I, I trust him. He's earned it. 
I said it has nothing to do with trust. It's it's just we we can't afford to be in a second half, and and Vic has to play all twenty or vice versa. So we got to be really really cautious with you and you and Vic right now with foul trouble and you know and adding as he Aziz does address that right away. But again, I think we just got to be cautious and. This he's just a great player. We, we've, we've played against him. We've coached him every day now. Uh, we know that. Um, it doesn't mean that we got to put all our eggs there tomorrow night. we we got to come out and get ready to play against a really good Georgia Tech team. It'll be nice for him to just finally get out there for the first time. But it'll be a process to get him kind of indoctrinated into the – not to the team, but into how we've been playing games. That, that'll be a little bit of a process. You mentioned being cautious. What are the specific parts about the transition from maybe scrimmages to practices to the actual authentic game-like atmosphere that you see guys would have to make and that Aziz would have to make? Well, you know, Aziz is he's, – he played a lot of basketball last year, college basketball. And, you know, um, like we went out and played at Utah Valley. They had a heck of an environment for our game. I don't know if it was like that other nights, but – uh, he played in some environments. He's played in big games. He's played with the NCAA tournament on the line in the conference tournament. I mean, played in the NIT. I, so I'm, I'm not worried about is he prepared or not to play in fifth, third in front of a bunch of fans, but he just hasn't done that yet this year. And quite frankly, you know, he just found out less than 24 hours ago that he was going to be able to do it. So, and, and our team's been playing without him. So, you know, and he's a, impactful player so it's going to take a little bit to adjust to that and I you know I think I think I'm aware of that I'll make sure our team's aware of that and you know hopefully our, I, I love how excited our fans are and I know they'll be that excited you know hopefully when Jameel gets to this stage but as excited as, as, as everybody is like we got to understand it's not like you snap your fingers and you know he's going to be at the same level he'll be after doing this with us for two or three weeks in games go back to yesterday quarter after 520 after whenever it was so uh, how did you tell him where was it what was the reaction uh, you, you described some of that but where were you guys and how fun is that for you to tell him or whoever told him I mean that that's an early holiday gift it was really honestly it was kind of emotional um we were on the court practicing and as soon as pra- and I, I said this like coach Adams Drew Adams is the, the amount of time and energy he's put into this process and and Chad Dollar as well, like guys, it's those unseen hours, right? I mean, it's amazing the the, the commitment they've made to this. But um, so it hasn't been rare over the last two or three weeks for me to look up and practice, and Coach Adams isn't in there, and I I know he's dealing with something. <laughs> you know, he's he's taking some phone call along the lines of these these waivers and these situations. So that's been pretty normal. So I remember looking up at one point yesterday. We had a light day yesterday, and I, I went, well, Drew's not in here, but he's probably dealing with something. I didn't think twice of it. And as soon as we broke down in the huddle, he he walks through the tunnel, and I thought he was just coming to give me some kind of update on some phone call. And he said, uh, he pulled me aside and said, Aziz is clear to play. And I honestly, I was emotional. I, 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 like, I, I was emotional. At tears, you know that type of thing, and, and my my first thought was just how happy I was for Aziz, you know how difficult I know this has been on him, and then my next thought was how difficult this is going to be for Jamil because he's in the same predicament, and it hasn't happened. So I sent the team to the locker room because we had film. Um, I pulled Aziz to the side and told him, and he was it was one of those cool moments you'll remember as a coach because he was so thrilled. Uh, and then I, I made sure I pulled Aziz aside before I told it. I mean, Jamil aside before I, I told the team because, you know, I, I wanted to make sure that, you know, that, that he knew that, you know, that there's efforts being uh, put forth on his behalf too, and his process is just a different one than Aziz's. And he was happy. You know, it's like I got I got emotional thinking about that. I mean, Jamil was happy for his teammate, and that's the kind of those are the moments as coaches that fans don't see, but. They make you feel like you got one of the coolest jobs when, when you're dealing with young people that, you know, kind of show you that side of them. So we, we got some good guys. Can you just describe how your team has kind of rallied around Aziz and Jamil throughout this process? And as a second part, what are the next steps for Jamil getting back on the court? I'm sorry. Can I – how they've rallied around him? Yeah, just how, how they've been there for Aziz and Jamil throughout this process. 
Yeah, I, we have a good group of kids, and I mean they're not kids. Shoot, they're some of them are some of them feel like they're you know younger brothers than me. I mean, I mean we're not that far out of age, right? I'm joking. I mean, C.J. Frederick. Sometimes I look at him, I go, Am I that? I'm not that much older than him, am I? You know that type of thing. But um, we we got a really good group of guys, and uh, you know we we have seven new guys that have done a nice job in a short period of time trying to indoctrinate themselves into our program and into our day-to-day approach and culture. Um, and then we have some returning guys that, that have really invested in this place and care a lot about it. And it's been neat to watch them look after each other. So, yeah, it's, that's that's been something I've been proud of to date. Now it's got to continue to grow, right? We're, we're in November. we got a long way to go from a cultural standpoint, a day-to-day approach, and a caring about each other standpoint. But it's got to grow. But to date, it's been pretty neat. And watching that, watching all our guys interact through this process has been – that's been something that's been neat to watch too. Looking at this matchup against Georgia Tech, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country so far, what makes them so dangerous in those moments with those balls, up upper grabs, 50-50 balls? And I'm sure you, as a guy who, who preaches that on your own end for your own team, it's, it's a big point of emphasis making sure they aren't crushing you guys on the glass tomorrow night. Yeah, we felt that, you know, you know Northern Kentucky – with one of the better offensive rebound teams in the country. It's like we keep telling the guys, this is the best offensive rebound team we faced. We said that to them when Detroit was coming through. Then we said that again um, with Northern Kentucky. And then we said that again in Georgia Tech. And they're looking at us like they can say this every time we play a game, you know, but it's it's actually true. And Detroit was a, is a all Mike Davis's teams are great rebounding teams. And then Northern Kentucky's like top 30 in the nation going into our game in offensive rebounding. And you can see the the physicality they play with on tape, and you could feel it in the arena here on Sunday. And then, as you mentioned, you know, Damon's got his team really crashing, especially from the, the corners and the wings and the weak side. They, they crash consistently, and he might have as – they might have as good of a collection of wing players as there is in college basketball. It's scary on tape. Uh, you know, you, you, you start going through the list, and you're like, those – those guys are good, man. Ke- Kelly's you – know, I think Kelly was close to staying in the draft, starting to go through the scout and research him, and I can see why. But he came back to school, and um, it's like guys um, that not only are really talented on their team on the perimeter, but they've played a ton of college basketball and have a ton of experience. And you just keep going down the list, and there's, there's like four or five of them that you just – whoa. And – so it's not just the offensive rebounding, but those guys are crashing from the perimeter and they're big and they're athletic and they're hungry and it's noticeable on tape. And that's not to mention the guys they're playing in the front court that are terrific rebounders as well. So it's, uh, yeah, that'll be a challenge going into this one. It's something we've, we've talked about as a staff, we've already talked about with our team and, you know, we'll work on it in practice. We've got time for two more. When you look at a guy like Jizzle James, having a player like Aziz playing with him, is it just, another option to make him more comfortable or can playing with that kind of player actually teach him a lot about the point guard position? Well, I, I think Aziz has a good, like really good feel for the game. I think sometimes, you know, you'll, you'll see like fundamentally, like he may not, like he may not look like he has the perfect footwork and the perfect shot fake. You know, so like if you actually watch him move, you might go, man, maybe he's not as fundamentally sound. He's actually incredibly fundamentally sound because he can really pass. He really knows where to be on the floor. He's strong with the ball. It just might not look the same because of his background, right? But he's got a great sense for how to play. He's really fundamentally sound. And I think he's experienced. So, you know, when you're a young guard, the more guys on the floor that are like that, the the easier it is for you, right? So there's a lot of guys on our team like that, you know. I, I could, if we just sing a lot of Z's, then I'd be, it's, it's, you know, it's not fair because there's a lot of guys and all those guys have been helping Jizzle quite a bit. Um, but yeah, J- Jizzle and Aziz, you know, played together a lot in practice and, you know, they seem to have a pretty good rapport. You've been a basketball junkie pretty much your whole life. Any relatable Damon Stoudemire stories he's been? Oh, man. Gosh, he was a great player, wasn't he? Um, no, I mean, I like I was a, you mentioned I'm the ultimate basketball junkie, and I say this all the time. I, nobody loves coaching more than me, but I love to play before I ever loved to coach. 
and anybody that was under six foot in the NBA was my hero because I'm going, they give me a chance. And there weren't many, right? And Damon was one of them. When I was, you know, not, I'm not much younger than him, but young enough that he was a guy that inspired me. The neat thing is uh, getting to know him a little bit in the coaching profession because he's been on the college side before he went back to work for the Celtics. You know, I've come across him over the years. Mike Roberts and him are friends, so that was always a way that I kind of connected with him. And he's a really good guy, and he's a really, really good coach. So, but you know, I, now it's you think of him more as a coach and, and somebody that I have a ton of respect for. But as a kid, I was a fan. You know, as, as I'm sure a lot of people were. You didn't watch him and think you were that good, though. No, I just was hoping I could be. <laughs> you know, there, there, there's a there's a list of a handful of guys that were under six feet, and I go. I got a chance, but I didn't think I was as good as them, that's for sure. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach.